fake Kelsey Grammer to kick this show off. Here we go. Well, hello there, everyone. This is Keith from Keith's Comics, coming to you from the beautiful Keith's Comics warehouse and studio. It's Thor's Day night, and we're going to try to sell you some stuff, full disclosure there. Uh, we can see an early adopter. Pablo is here. He's driving home. Oh, oh hopefully you get home before a lightning round starts. We also have big sports nights going on tonight, so we're going to clip on through some cool stuff. And so we can all get out to, to get the chicken wings and the, the, the nachos rolling there. Uh, let's see. We got all kinds of stuff going on tonight. Uh, we've been making a lot of progress in the warehouse. And we're going to show you some cool stuff that we've put together a show tonight. If you see something that you cannot live without, make sure you're on the Keith's Comics Network Facebook page. And then you're going to type in claim the title of the, of the item and any other information we might need so that we can assume so that we can get this item to you uh, if you're listening in the future we really appreciate that we can always 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 appreciate someone who wants to give us money <laughs> after the show uh, so many people watch after the show we uh, it's really stunning and we really appreciate that all right so if you are new to the show jump into the comment section and say hello so that we know you're there and if you're old to the show make sure you're jumping into the, the comments uh, as always, my wife Cindy is here. Right here. We have Kaylin over there making sure we're on the uh, the. We do have sound, right, Kaylin? Yeah. <laughs> and Chris is going to be showing you some books tonight if he doesn't hack up along. Yeah, he just he, he's just nodding over there. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hey, Garrett's here. All right, prices are good for thirty five hours. We'd like for you to get in here before Saturday afternoon. So that's when we uh, we shut it down and we send all the books out. But uh, you see something that you like, these shows stay up forever. And the prices aren't good forever. But take a look at the old show. Put them in the background. And also, don't forget to go over to our YouTube channel, in which we uh, have uh, a new uh, video dropped this week, in which we have an updated version of the New Mutants number 98. Just came back from CBCS. Hey, Jerry's here. All right. Thanks a lot for uh, dropping in and seeing us. Are you just about ready to go, everybody? Uh, 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 the National Lampoon has not been graded yet. It has. It is there. It has uh, been there for a couple of weeks. But uh, there we go. I, I can't wait. And the one wacky thing about uh, uh, CBCS, and then I'm, uh, they have a representative who's coming to our store and talking to us each every other week now. But uh, whenever you get something graded at uh, CGC, as soon as it's graded and it's ready to, to be mailed out, uh, you get a notification. You can go look at the grader notes, and you can uh, you know what you got. But on CBCS, until you go pick it up, you don't know what the grade is. It's uh, Schrodinger's comic. Is that what we're going to call that? It could be a, a 9.8 or a 1.0. Ah, Sue Gross says, let's get this party started. How about that, Cindy? Thanks, Sue. <laughs> All right, uh, go find the fake Kelsey Grammer. Get him away from the that football game, and let's uh, start the show. There we go. Keeps comics. There we go. All right, now you can put that back on. I don't know why we're leading off with that. We're just going to ruin our whole night right off the bat. Cool. A cool issue of Uncanny X Men, though. Uh, we're going to also open this up here and see if I can't adjust. Um, looks like I'm, uh, what's it called? Movie 16.9, whenever you're on uh, uh, movie uh, coordinates there. Yeah. Ratio, very ratio. All right, there we go. Ah, hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming by the show. <laughs> we're going to uh, get started here with, uh, unfortunately, uh, the worst, worst place you can start here, Uncanny X-Men. Uh, we, we see the ultimate failure of Cyclops, the worst X-Men, getting everybody killed. Even Look, he's even making Professor Xavier cry. Oh, man. Uh, this is, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I have this. <laughs> that's how I feel. This is a tomato to the face. Uh, this is a, an important issue. It's right there at the tail end of the Dark Phoenix uh saga right now i want to say crisis but that's a uh, wrong company this is issue number 136 from 1980 a nice solid fine plus 
VF, somewhere around in there, 7, 7.5, right around, I, I think it is. $40 is what we're going to put on this in the store, but you can have a little bit of a discount if you keep us from having to work it. $30 if you claim it here. Claim X-Men 136, and we'll sort out how to get that to you and take your money. And let's see, there's a, there's a, there's a, all right, Larry's here from uh, Western Texas. Nice. Next up. Best of DC <coughs> Digest. Best of DC Digest, featuring uh, 10 years of something or another, or 10 Here's issues. Best comic stories. All right. Issue number 11 of DC's year's best comic stories. From 1981, a VG Plus copy of this, $8 in store, $6 if you can't live without this. We have lots and lots and lots if you're into these uh, little digest size. We probably have 50 or 60 of them, just to... Let me know which ones you can't live without. Next up. Marvel team up. Oh, yes. Well, two out of three books are burned, <laughs> including this one. Marvel team up number 68 from 1978. The man, this is a great issue. Uh, it's a nice solid mid grade here. Newsstand edition. Eight dollars. If you uh, let it get out to the stores, six dollars. Uh, this is a. Uh, who is it? Uh, Despair? Is this the first appearance of uh, that villain, Despair? Uh, or Entropy? I can't remember which one it is there. But, uh, man, it's a really, really cool issue. Uh, burn Spider-Man and doing the man thing. Pretty sweet. All right, Alan's here. Alan is... <laughs> hi yeah, Alan. Uh, in a high school musical meeting with Kiddo, we'll be watching the future. All right, well, that's... Uh, oh, great. Anytime you want to watch in the future, we appreciate that. And if you are watching in the future... Hello, future. We appreciate you. Thanks a lot so much. All right, next up. Oh, wow. What is going on here? Oh, wow. All kinds of craziness. Go, go, checks. That's 1966 Justice League. Issue number 44. Oh, are, they, are they going? Are they got some pin particles going on? Oh, something's going on there. King size death. Oh, door stop. Was this a door star? You know what Dwarf doing? star. There we go. Now I'm with you. I I was I'm old too. I can't hear worth the darn anymore. That's VG minus copy. Still solid readable. Ten dollars if you can't live without it in the store. Six dollars if you claim it here. Issue number forty four of the Justice League of America. Oh, Barry, you you might want to see somebody about that hair. That's something else. Next up. Ooh, a, a kind of key issue there. Thor. It's Thor. You know why it's Thor? It's Thor's day. That's right. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. Who do, is that John Romita? Uh, or uh, John Buscema? It's, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. All right. Well, that's enough. Enough of that Thor's day. All right. Thor number 169. From 1969, a great mini classic issue. This book presents fantastic, and it has really sharp colors on it, but it has uh, some pretty significant things. It's going to knock it down to, to VG. Uh, the first time, that, as I understand it, that they, we talked about the origin of Galactus. And uh, the thing that I always forget is that... Uh, uh, Lee and Kirby were doing all kinds of books together. You think, oh, they were just on together on Fantastic Four. No, they had a good long run on Thor also. And they were, uh, did a whole bunch of other books together too. Where The idea is that you think that Galactus is only like a Fantastic Four villain. Now he had a, a really big significant storyline in Thor in which we, we learn uh, Galactus's origin. And that might be uh, come into play uh, with the big gigantic Fantastic Four movie being filmed right now. Who knows? The Monster and the Man God. Uh, issue number 169 of the Thor Origin of Galactus. $40, $45 in store. $35 if you claim it here. Uh, it's a VG. It's a, it's a lower mid grade uh, because of, it has a big tape pull on the R on Thor there. Makes me very sad. And the spine uh, is roughed up just a little bit there. All right, next up. Thor's buddy. <coughs> oh, Thor's buddy. Hercules, Hercules. And had the right leggings on, too. Hercules miniseries from 1982. We need to go left just a little bit there, Chris. Yeah, beautiful. 
uh, from 1982. This is all four parts. I looked at Mace that he's uh, he's about to swing. And who knew uh, Hercules was left-handed? Oh, more Galactus. Oh, my gosh. Yes, please. Uh, Hercules versus a Galactus. Uh, so Hercules, uh, he's what pantheon is he from? He's from the Greek. Greeks. Uh -huh. And uh, so who... Who would be the Roman equivalent of that? Um, I don't know. Somebody help me out in the, the comments there. Mm, he's war, right? I don't know. Hercules, uh, number one through four from 1982. The complete miniseries would be $14 in store or only $10. $10 if you claim it here. You can get your, uh, what's that guy's name that's, that's going to be Hercules in the movies? Uh, uh, Roy Kent? Yeah, that's him. Next up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at that cool book. Rip Hunter, Time Master, number 22 from 1964. Oh, they look like they're in a, a, a bit of a jam there back in uh, the Sherwood Forest. Uh, $30 for this fine plus copy from 1964. What would that be, 60 years old? Wow, that's an old book. Like me. $12 if you claim it here because I want to get you guys reading Rip Hunter and uh, Sea Devils and what else was that uh, around that time period? P.T. Uh, Skipper Boat Captain. P.T. Skipper Boat Captain? Uh, Storm. Captain Storm. Captain Storm. Okay. Mm what was one other big book? Doom Patrol maybe? <clears throat> Metal Men. Metal Men. There we go. There we go. All right. $12 for Rip Hunter Time Master. Next up. Oh, man, we're very happy that someone found this in our warehouse. Uh, highly sought-after collectible here. Uh, Wonder Woman number 209 from 1974. Beautiful colors on this book. Uh, we need to go left just a little bit there. Beautiful colors. Uh, but And it looks fantastic on this screen. But it's a, it's a straight VG. and that, Nothing wrong with that, as Jerry will tell you. The straight VGs are, are makes, just to make them affordable, but the colors on this are just so much better than what we usually find. From 1974, this Wonder Woman number 209 will be $25 in store, and even in this VG condition. Claim it here, though. Claim Wonder Woman 209 for $18. Next up, Suicide Squad, you know, Task Force X, I guess is what we'd call those, Pablo. All right, Starlog, number 34. We have found uh, a whole collection of Starlogs that I bought a long time ago. If you are a Starlog collector or you just want to peek at some here and there, uh, let me know. This is issue number 34, and uh, I guess we got Galactica 1980, by your command, from, uh, well, what else is going on there? Uh, apparently they were talking about an alien, the Alien Returns, Empire Strikes Back. Wow, a lot of stuff Rogers. going on. Beady, beady, beady. $10 in store. For this nice fine plus copy from 1980. $4. $4. Get your Starlog collection started right now for $4. Next up. Savage Sword of Oh, where's Cecil? Does he, I don't think he needs this one, though, but maybe. Uh, issue number 76 from 1982. Uh, one of the lesser Conan covers because uh, there is no Beastie and there is no Damsel in Distress. So I don't even know how this one got through. It must have been somebody, uh, somebody's uncle or someone's nephew needed a job. $6, if you claim it here, from 1982. Savage Sword of Conan at number 76. Next up. Another digest. More digest, please. Oh, they're so cute. Uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Best of Blue Ribbon Digest 46. Everything you wanted to know about Jimmy Olsen all in one handy-dandy little book. Only $6, and you can find out everything you need to know about Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. Next up. Swag time. Swag time. Oh, i got to get the animation going on here. Swag time. Swag time. <laughs> All right. Swag time is the time where we pull out the stuff that, that we got in collections that... Uh, Maybe there's just no place for them in the store. Maybe it's uh, just oddball stuff that I don't even know if we could display correctly. This is a, uh, these were very big for us uh, 20 years ago, and we we keep finding them in the warehouse. These were uh, chess pieces, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by um, no, there were statues of the new Batman chess set. Uh, limitation Eagle Eagle Moss. Eagle, Eagle, Moss. Eagle Moss. So uh, are these still lead, or did they stop doing them in lead? Yeah, so, so do not chew on these. 
Uh, and Cindy is telling me that while it's not broken, the uh, Daily Planet needs to be re-glued onto Superman's palms there. Is that right? Did I get yes, that right, Cindy? That's correct. All right. So it's a, a beautiful lead piece there. And uh, she's even been telling me that that Superman magazine that comes with it uh, goes for 10 12 bucks on its own. So there you go. $15 for a Superman holding up the Daily Planet. Next up. Oh, what is this? this? How long? How long to the point of no return? Well, you can find out for $2 with this Kansas CD. I don't, uh, I'm not warranty that that song is it's probably not on there. Kansas CD, $2. Next up. Retrospective of Buffalo Springfield. Oh, yes. Buffalo Springfield for $2. Retrospective. It's probably got all their best hits on it. They're, were they just too classy to say greatest hits album? Maybe. There we go. Next up. Kiss Destroyer. What? It's a classic album. Is it Destroyer? Not Destroy Ya. Destroy Ya is a Godzilla uh, kaju. No. This is Destroyer. That's $3 for Kiss Destroyer. Next up. Two Sides Digest. <laughs> Two Science Digest. We had this actually had some pretty cool articles in there. Yeah. The, the, the stuff the that we. The science of Jaws is correct, is what it says. The science of Jaws is correct, and you can see proof. They bring the receipts. Both of these together are from what year? Can you say what year those are from? Uh, nope. I need to write it. I should have written it down. I don't remember. But if Jaws is. Jaws, is, Jaws was 74, right? 76, so this is probably set late 76, 77. Both of them together are $1 in toto. There you go. Next up. VHS of the Hulk. Ho, ho, ho. Return of the Beast. Hulk VHS. Ho, ho. Wow, Hulk, Hulk. I'm not sure what this was. Was this an animation show or was this directed to v DVD? No, they had an animated show. Oh, animated show. Fantastic Four and Sp when Spider-Man <coughs> was going on, they did a couple seasons of Incredible Hulk. Yeah, this was supposed to come with uh, some kind of comic or something like that. It's been it's lost. Like a little pocket comic. Thing. Yeah, it's lost to the mist of time. This is for the VHS only. Maybe you still have a little v VHS player. You can uh, own your own Hulk VHS. Next up. Oh, there's actually a KISS tribute band called KISS Destroyer out of Dallas. Oh, that's neat. There you go. The Empire Strike Strikes. Well, my my uh yeah, my uh my uh southern accent jumped right in front of me there. Uh the Empire Strikes Back audio play, I believe if I'm my memory serving me correctly, NPR did this over several weeks. Uh there were twenty episodes. Uh we bought a set, if I can remember the, all the way back. I want to say this was like 90, 92 or 93. And whenever we opened the set, it didn't have all the, the CDs in it. It had uh, two copies of number one, a, a three, a, a four, and a five, or however many you're know, supposed to have. But we played those in the store over and over and over again at the old original Mockingbird on Matilda. And uh, here we found this in a box as we were cleaning up. This is only the first track. It has four... Uh, Four episodes. Two, it has two CDs. Two episode to a CD. Uh, open up the. Let me see that real quick. John Lithgow is Yoda. John Lithgow is Yoda, and it has uh, Mark Hamill, uh, Anthony Daniels, uh, Brock Peters plays Lord Vader, and uh, Billy D. Williams. Uh, he was smart enough. He got there. He, he is cool as the other side of the pillow. All right, issue uh, this one CD. You could. Get the start of that three dollars. Next up, Overstreet Price, Over Price Guide. This is the hardcover, right? Yep. Uh, what year is that? This is number forty-four. So that's ten years ago. But the Vampirella cover is three dollars, or I forgot to put the question mark on there, or question mark. Uh, we don't. We're not going to do those this this time. Uh, or it's free if you promise to give it away to somebody. So $3 or free if you promise to give it away. The Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide, number 44. And while the prices are not great, unless you're selling to me, uh, the uh, the articles and cool stuff are in there are pretty neat. Next up. The last of the swag we have. Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. How much did I put on that? Uh, don't say it out loud. Because I want to I confirm. 
What? No, 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 no. Oh, no. See, that's why I had to ask. Really. This is from, uh, what is it, San Diego Comic Con 2023? No one's going to pay $100 for that. 1995. There you go. There's a second there. Twenty dollars for this uh, tote. Well, I used it at the San Diego Comic Con, carried it around for a full weekend, and then uh, brought it home and put it in a closet until just recently. But it's, Keith is getting old. It's time to clean out those closets. Uh, this is the San Diego Comic Con. They get, it's a heavy duty tote. Also, man, that's something else. It's a uh, very uh, canvassy. Uh, I thought you might have one of those. <laughs> $20 though and you didn't have to hold on to it for uh, 20, 20 years <laughs> $20 for this tote and oh dude, the other side is Sandman so yeah. go left a little bit and uh, also if uh, you give me 25 I will sign it for you hey, that's just the way I roll what can I say alright we're done with swag back to the regular show all right, uh, from last uh, well, two years now at this point, Ghost Rider, number seven. And it's a variant cover, not a ratio variant, just a really cool variant. Look at that. Uh, I want to say it's the first appearance of a character named Exhaust. Uh, sounds about right. $10 in store, $7 if you claim it here. Uh, Ghost Rider, number seven from 2022. Ceremonial, ceremonial drink of the Diet Coke coming up. Ah. Yes, very good. Oh, we had the first part of this the other uh, last week, didn't we? And then we just, we scored the second part. Man, this is an important book, and wow, very melancholy in there too. Uh, Alan Moore writes the last couple of issues of Superman before John Byrne takes it over. This is issue five eighty three from nineteen eighty six. Beautiful VF copy. Uh, Whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? It tells the, the final Superman story. Uh, wow, wow. I guess Earth. Uh, Earth whatever, 17 or whatever. Uh, Action Comics, uh, 583, $15 in store. Twelve. Man, I know I was getting $15 for these in the 90s. This is crazy. $12, well, I guess they keep it in print. $12 if you claim it here tonight. Action Comics, 583. Next up. Yes, Alan, there's greatness there. Oh, yes. See, you, we, earlier in the show, we saw... Uh, Cyclops just fail miserably at keeping his girlfriend alive. And here we go. What We have to even make a what if out of it now. What if Phoenix had not died? From 1981, this is issue number 27 of this what if series. $12 in store, $8. If you want to find out if, 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 if Alex does not uh, fail miserably, what would have happened? I'm going to go with she lives. I don't know. What do y'all think? <laughs> yes, yes, Jerry. All right, next up, you are correct. I forgot how great it was until I, I said, well, you know, it's been a long time since I read this. So I sat down and, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. All right, Batman Incorporated, a big series from uh, two years ago. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Chew. Chew. The Chew variant. $18 uh, for this 1 in 25 ratio variant in store. $6 if you claim it here now. Uh, is this a, a a new bat character? I forget. Uh, she's got some kind of mechanical things, probably helping her out uh, kick. Because I know if you just kick Batman straight up, you'd probably break your foot. Six dollars for this one in twenty-five ratio variant. Next up, she dies but comes back alive months later. I didn't think you read comics, Sue. You're spot on. <laughs> Journey into myth. She journey into mystery, as Cindy, or as Cindy calls them, Jim. Jim, Jim with Thor, number one twenty-one. You know why we're doing this book? Because it's Thor's day. Uh, this issue versus uh, is that the Absorbing Man? Yeah, and, and Crusher Creel, the Absorbing Man, is just giving Thor the back of his hand like a boss. Look at that. Journey into Mystery 121, a nice VG Plus copy on this. Uh, usually these are much more brown whenever we get them. This is a very nice copy from 1965. $30 in store, 24 if you claim Journey into Mystery or Jim if you like. Number 121, $24. Next up. <laughs> Adventure Comics with Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. All right. Oh, no, that's not Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. 
uh, Legion of Substitute Heroes. Uh, the first, I think this is the first appearance of those cats. For issue number 306 of Adventure Comics, VG Plus, Fine Minus. We can arm wrestle about which, whether it's a 4-5 or, or a 5. It's right around in there. $25 in store. <laughs> what is that clock? Is that uh, uh, the great-grandfather of the, the, the clock from the Beauty and the Beast? Could be. The Gingerbread House, going to eat them. $15 if you claim Adventure Comics, number 306 right here. Next up. Green Lantern from 2011, uh, the Mankey. Am I saying that right? Monkey. monkey. Okay. You might touch your monkey. Uh, this is one in 25 ratio variant. Only three dollars for this Green Lantern. Are, is this New 52 or is that? Uh, oh, it's on the side there. I can't I can't see it. That green is not showing up on my face. Three dollars for this one in 25 monkey cover. Next up. Showcase? No chitty, just bang bang. Exactly right. All right, showcase finally gets to issue number uh, one hundred after they petered out in the mid seventies, uh, early seventies at issue ninety one, ninety or ninety one, and then uh, the, the great DC implosion, as Jerry has told us, wiped almost everything out. And then a few years later, they yeah, got got it back together and re uh, relaunched showcase. Uh, who they put in there? Uh, uh, Doom Patrol for a couple of issues. Patrol, Power, Power Girl. Girl. And, and then we get to issue 100 where we get to celebrate everybody who ever been in there. Hawkman was before that. Okay. 1978. Was that, Cindy? You said you mean with Pablo. Do you have an actor? William Minky? <laughs> no. <I do. laughs> uh, oh, dang it, I can't remember the punchline. The other one is... That is not my dog. <laughs> so, showcase number 100 from 1978. Oh, look at the creeper coming right at you. Uh, it was uh, Captain Comet, The Flash, Aquaman, a uh, whole bunch of spare characters there. Uh, like I said, super spare. $11 if you claim it here, VF copy of showcase number 100. Next up. More Digest. This one's featuring Legion Superheroes. Uh, issue number 57 of the Best of DC Blue Ribbon Digest, $10 in store. $6 if you claim it here. We've got some Saturn Girl. Uh, I don't recognize those other two. Uh, Lightning, Lass. Lightning Lass and probably Dual Damso, yeah. who previously was known as Triplicate Girl yep. until the tragedy of the Compu7, whatever it was. <laughs> Next up. Did now now she's just Lonely Girl. Would you believe I missed it by that much? Get Smart, issue number three from 1966. What an amazing book this is, because I had, I guess I'd never had one before. I cracked it open. It's all Steve Ditko art. This has got to be right after he left uh, Marvel with his, uh, as I understand it, a tiff with Stan Lee. And then he, you know, he got plenty of good work there. D Dale doing a whole issue of Get Smart, Steve Ditko artwork in which... Uh, I don't know if he didn't ink himself or uh, he was really taking his time. It was a really solid looking book. I liked it a lot. Get Smart number three, solid VG copy, $10 in store, $7 if you claim it here. Get, start, get, get Smart number three. Who is that created by? Uh, Mel Brooks and somebody else. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, next up. Uh, lightning round is next up. <laughs> Triple Good Girl suffered tragedy when her carbon copy disappeared. There you go. That's that's the way. To, oh, what you, did you say? Lightning round? lightning round. Pablo, get find a chair so you can sit down. It's time for lightning round. All right, lightning round. One, two, and three dollar books because we have one, two, and three dollar bins in the store. We're gonna throw out a whole bunch of books very quickly here. Next up. All These right. $3. $3. Yeah, $3. Marvel team up Spider Man and Hawkeye. Uh, Mr. Fear, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Mr. Fear right there. $3. Next up. Classic X Men. Oh, classic X Men. And this is a reprint of X Men number 11, all John Byrne. But it also has an all new Mesmero story in the back of that by John Bolton, I want to say. Crazy. That's a cool issue. 
three dollars. Buck Henry. There you go. That's the other creator of Get Smart. Next up, Go Crazy with Spider Man, one sixty six. Spider Man one sixty six with uh, Super Spare Stego Man, I believe that Stegron. is Stegron and uh, the Lizard slumming it. It is a Christmas book though, so Happy Holidays. Next up, Spider Man one seventy. Whoa, we're Dr. Fossil's talking about spare. Yeah, super spare. I mean, he couldn't make it in Cap's book, and that's already B-level. So he's, he's going, how did he even get in here? Uh, oh, he, he pretended he was one of the good villains, yeah. Green Goblin or Doc Ock. Uh, anyway, $3 for issue number. I forgot what issue number this is. Uh, 170. 170. Next up. Another spare, Molten Man, 173. Wow, all Spidey all the time. Uh, I don't know if you're – is Spidey's suit insulated? Because that would hurt. Uh, you know, he's melting the concrete, but I guess he can touch him on the shoulder. $3. Next up. And the last Spider-Man in the lightning round, 177 with the good villains. There we go. And, and uh, somehow uh, Spider-Man's on his way. You can tell because he has that uh, light shining on the floor. $3 for Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, 177. 177. There you go. Next up. Howard the Duck, 32. Howard the Duck, number 32, in which he... Three dollars. Yeah. Next up, Alf. <laughs> Alf. X Men. <laughs> <-Men. laughs> Number forty-four of Alf with a parody X Men appearance. Three dollars still. Yep. All right. Next up, Superman. Uh, one ninety-eight. Superman one ninety-eight. Uh, it's a little rough. Been a little written on, but that's okay. It's a great classic issue here. Uh, we've got some Kurt Swan rolling down through there. Three dollars. Next up. Second printing of the Planet of the Apes series that just came out. Ape should not kill ape. Planet of the Apes series. Uh, Marvel started doing these now that they own 20th Century Fox, and somebody said, "Don't we own a comic company? How come we're not publishing comics?" And then someone said, "Aha! We can fix that." And this is the it was a pretty popular when it first came yeah. out. Right as the movies came out too. Uh, one of the movies. I forget which. Yeah, Kingdom. I think. Kingdom. Uh, $3 for this uh, second printing of number one. Next up. This was the 1 in 25 of Gotham City Year 1, Issue 5. Or Issue 3, excuse me. Gotham City Year 1, Number 5, Number 3. Number, number three. 3. This is the 1 in, is this a 1 in 25 ratio variant? Yeah. 1 in 25 ratio variant, only $3. Yikes. Sometimes I think I am. Next up. Now we're in the $2 book. All right, Gahan Wilson's Nuts. This is, an, uh, I believe, a British import. Fanographics did a hardcover version, and we have that in stock, all, stock also uh, many years later. But this is the original softcover version uh, from the, I think this is from the, the por front porch of uh, Funkin' and Wagnall, who was kept in a mayonnaise jar. $2, though, for this Nuts, uh, strip, one of his early strips, Gahan Wilson. Next up. New Mutants 91. Seven issues away from the issue everybody wants. <laughs> uh, still $3, though? Two. $2. Oh, yeah, $2 for this issue. Uh, it's a little wavy. Someone had, had some uh, some juice while they were eating this. Next up. Overwatch, uh, issue four. Overwatch, issue four. I've not played that game. Anyone here? Nope. Kaylin and Overwatch? No, I don't know anything about it. Uh, I think MJC plays it a little bit, but uh, they did a comic. So uh, $2 for this issue number four, I believe it is, of Overwatch. Next up. Oh, I was wondering where you were, Garrett. <laughs> Incredible Hulk, number 117, in which we have no more Hulk. Uh, that's not going to end well for somebody. Next up. DC Comics presents uh, 48. Number 48, in which uh, Superman tries to, to get Aquaman his own title again. Uh, but, the, you know, so Aquaman, except for what, uh, Black Manta? Can you name another? No, that doesn't count. Ocean Master. Okay, well, okay, I, I might have to backtrack. What's the one? What's the spare villain in this issue there? Um, I don't know, but it looks like there's a black pirate black backup. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. From 1982, DC Comics presents two dollars. Next up, Spectacular Spider-Man, 157 with a decent villain. All right, Electro. All right. Two dollars for shock therapy. Next up. Daredevil two seventy seven. <laughs> Daredevil two seventy seven. Rick Leonardi uh doing the art chores during this run, which uh we you know, I'm okay with Leonardi to a certain extent, but this issue's very swell because Al Williamson's doing the inking on it. 
and it's super sweet. Two dollars. Next up. Lost in space number one. Oh, this is a, a dollar. One of the dollars. One dollar for Lost in Space. Did it, did it. Oh, not that Lost in Space. Space Family Robinson number forty nine. I think it is. Oh, it is forty nine. I'm sorry. Issue forty nine for a dollar. I look Green at Lantern, Green Lantern one sixty six. Green Lantern one sixty six. Nice, nice cover on that. And that's is that Gil Kane? Yep. Who's inking on that? It's a little bit. Uh, no, probably him. Probably him. Yeah, you're probably right. One dollar. It's a little rough, but there you go. Next up. And he's double take of Blue Devil seven and eight. Blue Devil seven and eight, in which Blue Devil fights the Trickster. And then falls in love, and Black Bolt is and the Trickster are fighting. Oh, so did did the trickster lose a bat to somebody? And he had to appear in, in Blue Devil. I enjoyed the Blue Devil original series. It was a lot of fun because he was a weirdness magnet. Just weird stuff kept happening after he got sealed into the suit. Okay, well there you go. He what? Stop that, Pablo. All right, that's the end of the lighting round, right? Somebody wake up, Pablo. Oh, there he is. Okay, Flash number 250 from 1977, a solid VG copy on this. This is a kind of a quasi-key, and I'm not sure why everybody's in love with the Golden Glider. Did she do something recently? Is she on the Harley Quinn animated show or something? Uh, I guess right up there with Dazzler, you have your super spare power. She on ice skates? Is that uh, so? If the ice, if uh, Captain Cold's not around, she's very easily defeated, I guess. Uh, she's <laughs> Golden Glider's first appearance here in Flash 250. Six dollars if you claim it. Next up. Pink Patrol. <laughs> Look at that. Issue number 95. Uh, it's a solid reader copy. Is that uh, the element, five element? No, Animal, Vegetable, Mineral Man. No. Oh, it's just another random. It looks like. It looks like only at one, maybe <coughs> one issue. Oh, well, it kind of looks like Metamorpho's uh, father-in-law a little bit there. Yeah. All right. Number 95 from the Doom Patrol run, solid reader copy. $9 in store, $6 if you claim it here. Next up. Comic Book Creator. Comic Book Creator, a really cool magazine. Uh, is it still being published today, Chris? Yep. All right. Yep, the new issue just came out with Tom Palmer. It's about Tom Palmer. All right. This is, uh, move it just a little bit left there. Yeah. Two Mars puts out a lot of great stuff. A little bit more. Got to get the tag in there or move the tag. Okay, this is issue 23 of Comic Book Creator. Uh, pretty much uh, all devoted to an interview with Wendy Penny. So if you are an old ElfQuest fan or, or were, always wondered about ElfQuest, here you go. In one fell swoop, you're going to learn all about it. I think this was a $10 cover price magazine that we're offering at $7 now. Comic Book Creator from 2020, $7. Next up. Oh, yes. Adventure Comics. Number 352. There was something about this, right? I don't remember. Do you remember the, the time travel one from last week? And the Legion of Super Substitute Heroes? Is, is this the Legion of uh, Super Villain situations? I can't remember. Adventure 352. Kaylin's quickly looking it up for us. From 1967. Uh, solid V. Oh, yeah. That's the adult... Uh, Villains, right? Because is that Princess Projector? She looks a little older there. Quite possibly. The, or is this the first? Oh, this is the first appearance of the, the team Fatal Five. Oh, okay. Yeah, a couple of them had appeared in previous issues, but then this is the first time they put them together. This is kind of like the first appearance of the Sinister Six. Uh, this is uh, issue three fifty two of the Adventure from nineteen sixty seven. Nine dollars if you claim it here. Fifteen dollars if it gets out to the store. Next up. We're in the scary season. Oh, spooky, scary. Oh, beautiful cover on this. Issue number 200 of the House of Mystery from 1972. Look at that. Oh, you look so scary about wolves howling until you look up at the moon. All right. Uh, wow. Look at that moon. That's pretty cool. And a reminder, uh, we, Agatha All Along is a pretty solid show, but please, no spoilers until... Uh, the show is done. Issue 200 of House of Mystery, $6 if you claim it here. Next up. Mini, another set. Another set from uh, 20 years ago. It's hard to believe. Uh, this is where they were revamping the Creeper, and they had had a new Creeper. 
Uh, this is the five-issue miniseries from that, from 2003. $10 in store, $6, and this is all five issues. Mm -hmm. I read once and put away carefully. Uh, she only uh, drove the car to church and had made sandwiches. No, that's another joke. Never mind. Beware the Creeper, one through five, $6. Next up. Yeah, the money's worth out of the giant monkey. <laughs> Conga. Uh, <laughs> it's a super spare uh, King Kong ripoff, right? It's a, it's a British King Kong. British King Kong, Kong ripoff. Uh, not even to Mighty Joe Young, because that was, it was Mighty Joe Young was in the 50s, right? Or was this the same time period? So this is late 50s, early 60s, but I guess it's popular enough that, uh, you know, like they said at DC, put a giant monkey on the cover and we're going to sell some books. Conga number 22, getting close to the end of its run, though. VG copy here from 1965, only $7. $7 for Conga number 22. Next up. World's Finest 156. World's Finest 156, in which we have a Joker uh, cover here. It's a good minus uh, because on one page, on one panel, someone in the midst of time exacto knifed out a picture of the Joker. So... So yeah, it's not it's incomplete. Ugh, six dollars for this cool book though. Uh, wow, uh, first Bizarro uh, Batman appearance here. Six dollars for issue number one fifty six of World's Finest. It's only like this. It's, only, it's so tiny. Why did they even cut it out? Next up, the great Superman comic book collection. Ah uh, yes. See so you, you guys, you youngins. Are y'all have it so well? There's collected editions, and you can go online and read stuff. But we waited with bated breath anytime there was any kind of, of stuff like uh, I remember mail ordering stuff like this off. Or if you went to, there wasn't even that many bookstores in the '70s, right, Pablo? Uh, what was that? Uh, had scroll stores. Yeah, no, not they hadn't got those yet. They were still tablets. Oh. The great Superman comic book collection is a great. Like, is that Neil Adams or, or Garcia Lopez on the I cover? Garcia Lopez. Stuff on yeah. So, fine, fine plus copy from 1981. $30. Oh, my gosh. I read my copy of this so many times. $25 if you claim it here. The great Superman comic book collection. Next up. Another set? More sets, please. Yeah. Uh, gosh, does anybody know anything about Bloodhound? Dan Jolly and Leonard Kirk did it. Oh, thanks. Dan Johnson did the cover art. Okay, well, there. Apparently, he's a what bounty hunter for the FBI. For the FBI, Kaylin's going to look it up for us. Six dollars for all ten issues, though. From I didn't even put the year on that. I want to say it had a pretty good hook, not and I forgot it. I'll say all ten issues. Six dollars for blood pans. It's so big. Oh yes, pull it towards you some. Look at that cover. That, is that Peak Zek right there? Uh, Punisher, uh, what was it? The Return to Big Nothing, original graphic novel, right? First miniseries. Oh, is this the first miniseries? You may be right about that. I, I didn't remember that. Well, we'll have to figure that out. But still, look at that cover, hardcover edition. I believe this is the first edition. Look. Vengeance's butt. Wow. Vengeance's butt. All right. Uh, beautiful hardcover edition of this book. How much is that? Uh, $25 in store or $20. Uh, is that, has he got Desert Eagles or has he got some uh, other? Big 45s. Big 45s. $20 if you claim it here. Next up. All American Men of War. Nice. All American Men of War, number 98. A nice reader copy of this. Uh, so we don't always sell a lot of these in the shows, but we uh, we sell enough of them that we put these in the show. But, uh, man, at our stores, these older uh, war comics just really get soaked up. It's really fun. This All-American Men of War, number 98, from 1963, only $6. Next up. Spider-Man ratio variant. Ooh, the 1 in tw 25 ratio variant from 2019. Uh, Spider-Man number 2 from that series. Uh, I don't recognize the artist on that. Somebody's helped me out on that. We had $20 on this at one time. $6 if you claim it here. Spider-Man number two from 2019. One in 25 ratio variant if you're new to the show. That just means that I had to buy 25 copies of this before I could buy one copy of this. 
Next up. All right, Aquaman number 20 from 1965. Uh, wow, I thought Mera didn't come along until a little bit later. This is issue number 20, 1965, $10 in store. Nice, solid VG copy. $6 if you claim it here. Aquaman number 20. How long did he have a title? He had... Through the 60s, in the 70s, I thought. Yeah, in the early 70s, and then he got wiped out, and then he came back to in Adventure Comics. I guess he did well enough. They gave him another shot at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, next up. Exactly what this is, but it's a one in hundreds. Oh, okay. Venom 35. Venom 35 or legacy number 200 or 250. Should be uh, six. It says legacy on the bottom, but it doesn't. Oh, it's uh, 200. Number 200. This would be Venom number uh, 200 if you stacked all the Venom miniseries back to back to back to back to back. Uh, we had $70 on this at one point. This is a one in 100 Stegman, what they call a virgin cover. $30 if you claim it here. Uh, Venom number 200 or 35, whichever co number you want to use, $30. Bloodhound, about a prisoner who's good at profiling criminals, so the FBI offers him a job and out of his prison sentence. No superheroes involved? All right. Fair enough. Thank you, Kaylin. Next up. Breach, another set, one through 11. All right, now let's find out what Breach is about. <laughs> This is all 11 issues of Breach. Uh, that's not Breaches, right? No, nope, just Breach. Who's the creative teams on that? Uh, looks like Tony Harris and Martin. I don't know the... Tony Harris, that's Starman, right? Yeah. All right. Or one of the Harrises. Uh, issues, oh, this is all 11 issues in one package for $6. Oh, well, it's very stylized art, though, right? Yeah, one of those negative spaces. Yeah. That's cool. Six dollars though, and Kaylin's going to tell us what breach is about in a little bit. Next up, mugshot shots. Mugshots. This is a conditional offering because uh, someone had said that they were really into National Lampoon. So this was a, a collection of National Lampoon cartoonist John Caldwell. Uh, the uh, I believe this is a very, if not the first printing, a very early printing of this a collected edition. Mugshots from National Lampoon. Three dollars from 1980. Next up. Last three. Last three. Three. Second Hercules miniseries. Hercules, Hercules, in which he does not have the right leggings on. No. From 1984, this is issue one through four. Looks like we got a little scroll action going on there. Skippy. All right. And then, ooh, who is that? That's his dad. Oh. You, I believe. It's been a while since I've read it. Uh, okay. Eleven dollars in store, eight dollars if you claim it here. Now you got <laughs> two. two little shop, little shop of horrors. I didn't even know DC had ever done this. <laughs> this is uh, the movie adaptation or the play ad movie adaptation from 1987. A beautiful VF minus copy of this. I mean, I've been doing this for 45 years. Uh, Collecting for 45, almost 50 years. I didn't even know this existed. It's, it's weird that you can come across a book you'd never even heard of. From 1987, Little Shop of Horrors movie adaptation, $18 or $15 if you claim it here. Next up. Last book of the night. Last book of the night. 125. <laughs> Marquez, 1 in 25 ratio variant from 2018. We got twenty dollars on this. Look at that. Is his 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 uh his claws on fire? Yeah, they did that. That's good. Stabbing people all the time wasn't good enough, so they superheated his claw. That's gonna leave a mark. Six dollars if you claim it here. One in twenty five from twenty eighteen. There we go. That's another show in the books, everyone. Thanks a lot for coming by and seeing us. If you're watching in the future, we really appreciate that because uh, you know, we're trying to sell you stuff. Let's see, where is that? Where is that? <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. Hello, future. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue, for coming by and seeing us. We appreciate it. Cindy says, bye, Sue. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Chris has been here uh, hacking up along and helping us out. Kaylin has been keeping us on the straight and narrow. And Cindy's, I don't know, she was just, just moral support. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we need that. 
<laughs> we're at Keith's Comics. I'm Keith. I hope you'll come by and see us in the stores. And if I don't see you in the stores, I'll see you next time. There you go. Thank you, Killian. Uh, House of Mystery 143, because Chris has one more book in him. Usually, uh, usually I don't, uh, I, I require three people to give me flames, but uh, <laughs> Alan's uh, p uh, tacos and pizza put me over the top because I'm so hungry. No, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> this is House of Mystery 143 from 1964. Uh, Martian Manhunter was from Action Comics, and he was a backup feature for many, many years. And I guess they figure, uh, figured superheroes are doing well enough. Uh, we'll give him his own title, and or not enough title to make it uh, Martian Manhunter number one, but House of Mystery. Did you see? Uh, yeah, and then and not not so much. House of Mystery. Who's that? That's his little sidekick, Zook. All right. Uh, it, this has a loose centerfold. It's a VG plus though. Really nice, nice solid book. Fifty dollars in store. Forty dollars. You can't live within it. <laughs> Naked Simpsons demon. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you're not wrong. There we go. Cool book. I love finding these kind of things. Uh, well, I didn't find it. Chris found this in the, out in the warehouse. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jerry. Martian Manhunter was in Detective. See, that's right. Our our uh, our folks are keeping us on the straight and narrow here, though. Yes, that's right. I should have known. John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. That's right. And when they had a bunch of stories in those detectives comics. All right, there we go. Another one in the books. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, we will see you again next Thursday. But remind reminders: we haven't decided what we're going to do on the week of uh, Halloween because that's on a Thursday night. I would doubt very seriously if we're going to be here because it's candy time. You have to <laughs> hand it out. Nope. <laughs> if you mean hand it to my mouth, yes. That, that's, a, that's a thing that could happen. For Keith's Comics, I am Keith. If I don't see you in our stores, I'll see you next time. Keith's Comics. <laughs>